and good morning. Good morning. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. Welcome to our church. We want to be food for the hungry and living water for the thirsty. This is a safe place for all ages to worship, to learn, to grow, and to become faithful disciples of Jesus. And children, we want you to know that we celebrate your smiles, energy, wiggles, and giggles. So welcome to all who are here today, and let's worship and let's praise God together. And we remember that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Our vision is believing, belonging, and becoming. And we welcome and worship leadership today, Janet Hibbs Jones. And we do have several announcements that we yes, want to lift up. Yes, indeed we do. And of course, we always encourage you to review and keep track of your circuit rider. There's tons of great information in there. It would take us all hour to share everything. But tonight, with our Ignite service, as we move forward, and we're in, still in the Old Testament, as we're taking another view on restoring justice this week with messages that matter. Also, after the service, we'll be having some uh, light snack or light meal as we revive that fun event. Uh, and if you would like to participate in that or share one of your favorite little snacks or whatever with us, talk to me after the service. We'd be, we'd be more than happy to have you come and share with that. Also, I do want to point out that this Wednesday, there will not be any summer splash as uh, there will be some conflicts with confirmation camp. Yes. And also, then, as we look toward the holiday weekend, we want to lift up that the Columbus String Orchestra is going to perform a free patriotic concert, and that is 2 o'clock right here in this sanctuary on Saturday, July 2nd. And uh, we want to lift that up, beat the heat, and come and celebrate the 4th with some patriotic songs. So that'll be a blessing. And then on Sunday, uh, July 3rd, we want to lift up that we will be having regular worship downtown. We will have our first Sunday potluck, and we'll, we will be enjoying that. And Christian Social Witness is hosting that, and we're going to have fan favorite fried chicken. So that's at 11.30. And then do you want to talk about the evening? Yes, the evening service. I know that with the holiday, that uh, with the evening service, we will actually be doing it online only for the night of July 3rd. So we do hope it will air it right at 6 o'clock, so you won't miss a thing. Plan on while you're grilling, go ahead and have your phone ready right there. You can be grilling burgers and doing whatever else. But because of that, since we won't be doing live, we will be there, but just not won't be doing live, uh, we will be doing communion tonight. Uh, at the Ignite service. So if you want to come and do communion instead of next week, you can come this week. And a United Women in Faith has a spiritual growth retreat that is coming up very soon. There are, Cindy, Rody, could you pick up on the table? There are some sheets. There's some registration forms. Um, this is going to be at St. Benedict Center in Schuyler on Wednesday, July 13th. It's coming up very soon. But the deadline for registrations, I believe, is the 28th. And so please uh, get those registrations in. If you would like more information, you can talk to Brooke Seams. You can talk to um, Kathy Davis. You can talk to any United Women in Faith uh, members, and they will give you that information. And do please check the circuit rider, especially those upcoming events. We're going out as far as October right now, giving you a heads up about some things that are going to be coming soon, so check those out. But as we join together in worship today, let's go to our Psalm 77. I cry out loud to God so God can hear me. During, During the, the day, day I, I look for my, my Lord. Lord. At, At night, night my, my whole being refuses to be comforted. I will meditate on all your works. I will ponder your deeds. God, your, your way, way is holiness. Who is, is as great as you? Let's join in our opening song. Let us rise as we sing, O God, our help in ages past.
may be seated. Let us sing our song as we invite those who are young at heart to come on up. show me oh is this yours yeah uh-huh how about this let's just start like this is that better oh so let's talk about this <gasps> just one just one. Oh, look at this this is cool What is it? Yeah. It's kind of like a treasure chest, isn't it? It's kind of like a treasure chest. This treasure chest holds candy. This treasure chest holds money. This is like a little, it's a little bank, isn't it? It's a little bank. Yeah. Yeah, and it says, grow with us. And so this is a bank just for you. That's just your size. And I love it so much. Do you want me to help you? Do you want me to help you? Hmm? I know. <laughs> you have one. You, oh, I know, but you have one. So when we think about saving and storing, right, we store up things. We st store things in boxes and, and cedar chests and banks, and we collect items, don't we? We collect things and we save. But when we think about the things that we collect and we think about saving, you know, that reminds me of a very important principle that, that our, the founder of our Methodist faith, faith taught us. And he said that we should store up yeah, he said that we should store up and save up as much as we can. Save all we can. And he knew that there would be times that we would want those things. We would want those things and we'd want them to be a blessing to others. Yes, so you're learning how to save. Yeah, yeah, you're learning how to save. And you're learning how to grow and I like that little bank. It says, grow with us. I like that. Yeah, you can say hi. <laughs> but I love, I love the fact that we, as God's people, are called to be good stewards of everything we've been given. Everything we've been given. Yeah. That means for you, that's your toys. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All those things. What do you think, Peyton? You like that, don't you? I know, I know. But you have one in your hand. You have one. So should we pray? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I should tie this into the lesson too today. And that does work because do you know that God's people lost everything? There were times when they were in exile and they lost everything. And yet God told them that everything they had would be restored. Everything they had would be given back to them. And so we know that in our lives, when we lose things too, it'll come back. Hard lessons to learn. Hard lessons to learn. Should we pray? Do you want to pray? Let's pray. This is a repeat after me prayer. Let's all pray with Peyton. Dear God. Thank you, Thank you for loving us, for loving us and, helping us and helping us and inspiring us, and inspiring us with the gifts that we've been given. Be with us, be with us as we hear your word, as we hear your word and as we enjoy your blessings. Enjoy your blessings. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> that was
was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming up today. <gasps> Bye. Fist bump? Fist bump? Give me five? Give me five. All right. Bye. See you later. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Let's sing our song of prayer. <laughs> That is from last week, so let's go to the next slide. We are having some issues with our projector this morning. Lord have mercy. We can still pray for these churches. And we'll still pray for let's these pray churches. Let's pray for these churches, Monroe, Geneva, and Silver Creek United Methodist Churches. Also, and that is served by Pastor Connie Kramer. And in, um, the altar flowers are in honor of Robin... Curry's parents, Jim and Shar, they're celebrating their 62nd wedding anniversary. And so we celebrate with them. And also, and then there's altars on the back altar. And those flowers are to celebrate the uniting of Janelle Daybill and Cody Martin. And so we're celebrating. They were united in marriage yesterday at Camp Pawnee. So we celebrate with them. Other celebrations we want to lift up. Birthdays, anniversaries. Yes. Betty, Betty Blazer celebrating birthday tomorrow. Others. Scott. They celebrate their 28th, right? 28th wedding anniversary on June 25th, so. And they got to spend it doing what they love, bowling and shopping. <laughs> Others, others, any other special celebrations coming up? Other things we want to lift up? Yes. Tuesday, your parents are celebrating their 63rd. And your niece gets married next Saturday. Awesome. We're looking forward to that opportunity to celebrate my father's life. We're going to have his memorial service on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So we're looking forward to that opportunity. We've been going through lots of memories and lots of things. Others. Any others that we will lift up? After all the heat, let's celebrate a beautiful, cool morning. Beautiful morning. Beautiful today. morning. God's gift. Any others today? As we look at prayer concerns, we want to pray for Robin and Tim Swearingen and family. Robin's mother, who is in a care facility in Holdridge, she will be going on hospice care tomorrow. And so prayers for Robin and family. We also express our sympathies to Stuart and Kristen Gaussman as they, um, as they grieve the passing of their son, Reese. Yes. Continue to lift up the soup and checks and Laura and pray for that miraculous gift of life for lungs for Laura. Any others today? 
Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty and gracious and ever-loving God, as we humbly come into your presence this day for worship and in prayer, God, you invite us to pray with all that we are and all that we have. When we're having good days and bad days, when we're having good moments and bad moments, God, you invite us to be in an attitude and a posture of prayer that reminds us of who you are. Little Peyton reminded us of that this morning. And God, we thank you and praise you for the blessings and celebrations in our lives. And yet, God, we know that our hearts are heavy from all of the prayer concerns that are lifted up. We pray for those who need healing of the body, mind, and spirit right now. We pray for those who need the miraculous gift of life through a transplant. We remember all who are grieving those who are preparing to remember their loved ones' lives. God, it is a season to celebrate those special birthdays and anniversaries, to celebrate weddings, to celebrate those rituals in life that give us reason to be filled with joy. And yet, God, we know that as families gather to remember loved ones, that your Spirit's presence will be there to give them peace and comfort where needed most. Gracious God, help us to look forward to what is coming soon for our church family, for our community, and let us be grateful and thankful for all of those blessings that we sometimes take for granted. And God, in this season when gas prices are high, grocery bills are higher, help us to be good stewards of everything you've given to us. God, we thank you and we praise you for this day for each and ever, every opportunity we have to hear your word and to be inspired by it. God, we pray for our world right now, for the violence and chaos and war that continues to ensue. And God, we pray for our nation. Once again this past week, we remember how divided we are. Some of our friends are celebrating and others are grieving. And so God, help us to remember to love people, to meet them where they are, just like Jesus did. And God, all of this we pray in his holy name, the prayer that he taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to that time in our service that we have an opportunity to share our gifts. Again, to remember what God has done for us in the past, what God is doing in our present, present and to remember what God will continue to do for us in the future. Let us celebrate the church and the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I invite our ushers to receive our gifts today.
Let us rise and praise God. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. In your holy and perfect and loving name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the Word of God. This morning's scripture lesson is written in the fourth chapter of Micah, beginning with the first verse. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame. I will assemble the exiles and those I have brought to grief. I will make the lame my remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. As for you, watchtower of the flock, stronghold of daughter Zion, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will come to daughter Jerusalem. Why do you now cry aloud? Have you no king? Has your ruler perished that pain seizes you like that of a woman in labor? Writhe in agony, daughter Zion, like a woman in labor, for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you out of the hand of your enemies. But now many nations are gathered against you. They say, let her be defiled. Let our eyes gloat over Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan, that he has gathered them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Rise and thresh, daughter Zion, for I will give you horns of iron. I will give you hooves of bronze, and you will break to pieces many nations. You will devote their ill-gotten gains to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. The sovereign Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this word. Thank you, Brooke. Lord, have mercy. I am not sure what's going on with this. Oh, my. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God restores completely. That's our blessed assurance. Now, since Pentecost, we've been embracing messages that matter. We've been gleaning some messages 
from the minor prophets. And even though we've heard some harsh judgment and difficult words for God's people, we have heard about putting things right with the prophet Joel and practicing righteousness with the prophet Amos. And today we are going to prepare our hearts for restoring justice with the prophet Micah. Now, when we think about the prophet Micah, our minds may immediately remember Micah 6.8, specifically addressing the justice piece. Yet we are going to talk about restoring this morning, and the justice piece will be addressed by Rex later at Ignite this evening. Now, our focus passage truly gives us a great glimpse of the context of Micah. The prophet ministered to God's people during the reigns of several kings. There was upheaval in both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Even though Micah was living in the southern kingdom in Jerusalem, he was concerned with Israel as a whole, and specifically the fact that Israel had a major sin problem. Even so, the Lord wishes for peace for all of God's people and for a glorious future. But how can this be achieved when the people are so stubborn and rebellious? Micah's answer is God's gracious forgiveness. The book of Micah represents two centuries of Israel's meditation about its God-given role in the world of the nations. For God's people, their holy city was Jerusalem, also called Zion. And even though chapter 3 focuses on bringing judgment to the holy city because of their sin and because of the sin of its leaders and how it indicates how Jerusalem will be reduced to rubble, God would transform it into the most important mountain in the world. Zion would become a place of pilgrimage for many people in the world. And one day, God's people will go to the mountain to worship and to learn how to obey God's commandments and to walk in God's paths. Imagine a time when there won't be any need for the tools of war. Swords being turned into plowshares, spears being turned into pruning hooks. Imagine no training for war anymore. Imagine that time when all would have their own vine and their own fig tree. A vision of abundance, right? And the people won't be afraid because they have walked in the right paths of the Lord. Other nations may have their own gods, but people, God's people know exactly where they need to be. And then God is going to gather the lame and the exiles. From that remnant will be the future of God's people. And then the former dominion will be restored to them. Of course, God's people will be exiled to Babylon. And it is not going to be a pretty place for them. And yet, that will be the place where God's people are rescued. That is the place where God's people will be redeemed. And God's people will experience grace and mercy and forgiveness. In my preparations for this message, I read the following. When God heals and restores, God brings you to a place better than you were before. That is definitely something to ponder. Yet it can't possibly be true without focusing on God being our healer and restorer. And to trust God to bring you to that better place. I believe that sentiment is at the heart of every prophet's message. That even when God's people are facing a future of pain and suffering and even exile and isolation, there is always hope in God's story. The best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. Now, I have shared numerous times throughout the years that I am a keeper of broken things. The first item is in my broken collection was a beloved mug of mine from college. It was reddish burgundy in color, one of my favorite colors, and my heart broke with it as it fell out of my passenger side door at Pilger United Methodist Church on a summer day. And now I have in my collection angels with broken wings, a picture 
of a, a broken window with a cross in it. And through the years, these broken items have spoken to me because we have all faced brokenness in our lives in one way or another. We also know that it is what we do with that brokenness that makes all of the difference in our lives. We can, we can become bitter or better through our experiences. Remember, again, God restores completely. That's our blessed assurance. Right now, there can be no doubt that many people are feeling fatigued by all of the brokenness around us. When we see the news filled with all of the things that divide us as individuals and as a nation, our truest emotions emerge. Sadness, anger, grief, frustration. As United Methodists, we acknowledge these emotions because we continue to hold in tension our focus on the biblical witness and also on the social witness. Of course, we have heard this month how the prophets sought to balance this through their loving God and loving neighbor, even when times were tough and even when the news was so difficult. In response to this week's past news, our Great Plains Bishop Reuben Sines Jr. has reminded our churches that we are called to support women and children in all stages of life. Our social principles state, and I quote, we are equally bound to respect the sacredness of the life and well-being of the mother and the unborn child. We must acknowledge that according to the U.S. Census, more than 10 million women have limited or no access to health care. Approximately 7 million children live in poverty. So the bishop reminds us that as a church, we must respond in many ways, including advocating for policies and funding that ensure all women and children, especially the poor and vulnerable, have access to food, safe shelter, clothing, child care, health care, and education. He also reminds us that we can be and we need to be grace-filled and caring in our social media comments and in our communication with one another. You know, our faith ancestors, they face so much. They face that, that judgment of exile. And yet, they continued to hold on to the hope of redemption and restoration. Through our facing brokenness, experiencing fatigue, and feeling so many emotions, we need to turn to the one who gives us strength to face the hard days, the one who gives courage to battle fatigue, and the one who gives voice to our emotions. Again, Micah represents two centuries of God's people living into their role in God's big picture of what was to come. And eventually that big picture would include the role of the Messiah to be the savior of God's people to conquer sin and death. We are called to be faithful disciples of this savior and to hear the cries of the most vulnerable and to try to do our part. Now, since Pentecost, we've used the red pyramids this year. I don't know if anybody else noticed. Typically, they're up for one Sunday every year. We decided to leave them up to celebrate our new banners, but also to leave them up. Because since the end of May, we've been having the candles, serving as a memory of the lives lost to violence. But the candles have also been reminding us of the Spirit's presence and power. This broken world is counting on us to share this light and to share our fire of passion. We cannot do this on our own, yet with the Spirit's help, we can do anything. Again, God restores completely. That is our blessed assurance. I don't know about you, but those words matter to me. They certainly give me hope, and they certainly give me a sense of peace. So may this message that matters 
and the voice of the prophet Micah remind us that we are called to tend to broken things. And we are always to be restoring what we can. And this also means restoring justice. Amen. Let us rise as you are able. Let us sing 2130 in the faith we sing, the summons. This is a paraphrase from 1 Peter 5.10. After your season of suffering, God in all his grace will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Rex Winkle. 